Let us architect a simple chat application. We will be using API Gateway, WebSockets, microservices on AWS. Functional requirement. Users should be able to chat using a web or a mobile app. So what are the services required for such an application? You should be able to connect, disconnect, send a message and so on. Technical approach. The front end would be a web page or a mobile app. All interactions from the chat clients to server happen over web sockets. Request response payload is JSON. The backend will be serverless as far as possible and all deployed on cloud. So why web sockets? Why not a simple HTTP connection? WebSockets facilitates two-way communication. Over a single connection, we can send data from client to server and vice versa. This is something we require for a chat application. In a HTTP connection, you have a request and a response and then the connection gets terminated. Therefore, that is not suitable for building real-time chat applications. Let's begin with a very simple logical architecture. There are multiple chat clients which send and receive messages to and from chat server. Same logical architecture with individual components of the chat server shown here. There is a gateway which handles communications with the client, request handlers behind it, and there is a data store. This is what our technical architecture looks like. There are multiple chat clients which communicate with the API gateway over web sockets. The API gateway in turn invokes microservices, in this case Lambda functions, behind it to handle the chat messages. And there is a data store, which in this case is a DynamoDB. Let us understand individual pieces of this architecture one by one. Chat client is the front end that end user uses. It could be a web page with JavaScript libraries, or it could be a mobile app. It captures username before the application can be used, and it communicates with the API gateway or web sockets. It sends connect, disconnect, and message requests to the server. It also receives messages from the server. Chat clients are identified by connection ID. Connection ID becomes available first time when the chat client establishes connection with the API gateway. On the front end, it displays list of chat users which are available and facilitates message interactions between them. The API gateway. Chat clients communicate with the API gateway or web sockets. In API gateway, you configure routes. Essentially, you map the routes to backend services, Lambda in our case. Connect, disconnect, default are some predefined routes and you can create additional custom routes. Incoming messages have route information in them. Backend services invoke based on the route. Let's look at the microservices, which are Lambda functions in our case. Uh, we have three Lambda functions, connect, disconnect, on message. These Lambda functions are mapped to various routes in the API gateway and they handle incoming requests initiated by the chat clients. So when a chat client initiates a connect with the API gateway, uh, the connect lambda function gets invoked and this particular function, it saves the connection ID and user name in the DynamoDB table and sends a message to all other chat clients about availability of this new user. Uh, similarly, in the case of disconnect, uh, this function uh, deletes the connection ID username from DynamoDB table and sends a message to all other chat clients about this user no longer being available. And the on message um, Lambda function is used essentially to send messages to other chat clients. So if a user is sending a message to another user, this is the Lambda function that gets invoked. 
it's important to know that the connection ID of the target chat client should be known to the server to successfully send a message to it from server to client. So we are using DynamoDB as our database and uh, we will have a table like the following here. Uh, basically a list of available users where we store a connection ID and username information. So in the case of connect, uh, we have an insert record here in the case of disconnect we delete a record from here and uh, we can of course look up information from here okay now that we have seen individual components of the architecture let's look at the overall architecture one more time let's look at the connect flow chat client one sends a connect request to the api gateway the api gateway invokes the connect lambda function which in turn inserts a record into the DynamoDB table and it sends a message to all other chat clients about availability of this new user. Similarly, in the case of disconnect, the disconnect lambda function gets invoked and it deletes a record from the corresponding record from the DynamoDB table and sends a message to all other chat clients about this particular user disconnecting and in the case where one user is trying to send a message to another user uh, the on message lambda function gets invoked the target username or connection id should be available in the incoming message the, the lambda function can send a message to a target client only if it knows the target connection id in case the target connection ID is not available and only the username is available, the target connection ID can be looked up from the DynamoDB table and then a message sent to the target chat client. Some design questions. AWS Lambda has an upper limit of number of concurrent invocations. What happens when we reach this upper limit? While AWS Lambda does have an upper limit for concurrent invocations, you can enhance this limit by requesting AWS and explaining your use case. If satisfied, AWS will increase the upper limit for you. How to prevent WebSocket connection idle timeout? If a WebSocket connection remains idle for say 10 minutes or so, it will disconnect. To prevent this, you can send a heartbeat kind of a message every five minutes or so and that will take care of this issue. How can I implement a chat group? You will need some additional services like create chat group and so on. And you will need a table to store chat group names and what connection IDs belong to that chat group. And to send a message to all the users in that chat group, all you have to do is look up what users belong to the chat group and send messages to them and so on. So that's all about this architecture. Thank you.